You're listening to the Moist Boys Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a, a another very special episode. For those of you that listen to the Moist Boys Podcast, you'll be familiar with that term. If you are just a listener of His Dork Materials, it's triumphant return to the internet. You might not be familiar with that term, but over on the Moist Boys podcast, we have very special episodes pretty much every week. Every single week. The non-special episodes are the ones that are uh, ironically Probably rarer. Probably actually the special one. Yeah. yeah. But uh, today we're going to be doing <coughs> a little crossover episode for various reasons we're going to get into real quick. Uh, for those of you that just want to hop into the Picard uh, breakdown for episode six... Too bad I'm not going to figure out when the time code is. <laughs> Sit down and shut the fuck up. Uh, but for those of you that uh, have not been watching along with Picard, uh, maybe strap in for an episode. Yeah. I don't know. If, you haven't, if you're not watching it, uh, we'll probably try to do a little bit better play-by-play-ish, maybe. Probably not, but we'll try. I don't know. I think I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have... Uh, f- f- for those of you who have been listening along with us... Uh, and just understand my disdain for what has been going on in the show. I might, I might throw a slight curveball on this with this episode, but, but we'll see. Maybe. Yeah, I, I probably well, won't. She probably won't. You probably I won't. Probably won't. No, that's fine. Uh, I'll probably stick to my my same tone <laughs> that yeah. I usually take with yeah. the show. Same. Uh, defensive at the beginning and the end, and just utter, utterly trashing <laughs> it in the middle, <laughs> just tearing it to pieces. But uh, hanging out for it in the beginning, and then it's it like, oh, you're the right. more you're like right. we talk about it, you're it's right. just like, fuck, this is awful, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's been a, it's been a rough going. It's been a learning experience for everybody. It's it's been a time. Uh, we're just over halfway through uh, the se- season oh, one of Picard. There yeah. are four episodes left. I think yeah, there should be four oh, episodes fuck. left. Yeah. So uh, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Uh, seven, Jerry eight, Ryan should be in three of those. So we're looking forward to her coming back. I think it's gonna be seven and nine. <laughs> and probably ten. Uh, probably ten. I'm I think she's eight, gonna be nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten. Looking at it, Come unfortunately, on, like on, they guys. fucked it up. They Come really on, fucked guys. it up. <laughs> but they, at least they had the decency to put Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis in episode seven to break it up a little bit. Yeah. So at least there's gonna be at least four episodes of fan service e stuff. Happening, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, there is some stuff that we're going to be talking about that is hopeful for the next few episodes, <laughs> but also there are. I know there's about a fifty percent chance that the next episode is going to be what we don't like about the show. So, there's a chance. Oh God, I didn't even think about. Th- yeah, we'll get into that. So, yeah. that being said, you are what? <laughs> So that's what I got. Who on the other half? Of- and I don't know who's on third. Who's on first? Uh, my name is Josh. I'm the best bro, Heather. <laughs> I am the Commodore. Uh-huh. You're always next. Don't give me. We're eyeballs. in the sitting order now. I don't it's care. the sitting it's, order. It doesn't matter. That's how we usually do it. Josh and then Jonathan and Heather. It's always how it goes. Oh, I'm sorry. I was. I just default to the sitting order. So. Oh. Uh, for those of you who are uh, on our Twitter and Instagram, you'll see that we've been doing some work to the old recording space. We've got some new stuff. We've got, you might hear a little bit less echo when we pull away from the mics. Um, I just wanted to apologize to Feet Guy. There is no Canadian guy in this episode. So uh, I guess you'll have to come back another week. Maybe we'll get him back on for you. Or maybe it'll just be the three of us forever, and this whole thing will collapse into in on itself. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? The future is wild. I'm just going to say this feet guy. I've got the best looking feet. I can't comment either way. <laughs> I was gonna say, y'all can fight me. Bring it. Uh, but before we get into get, Picard. Compared to me and Harley. I don't I've never, know. Seen, I've his never feet. seen Harley's feet. <laughs> <laughs> we lived with a dude, and I never <laughs> saw his like, feet. We lived I, with like, yeah, I know. Before we get, into, before we get into that, though. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to uh, give some updates uh, f- about the Moist Boys. Uh, we've got uh, a bunch of stuff coming up. We actually have a plan to put out Patreon content for all of our wonderful listeners whoop, whoop. that want to support us. I guess people that are going to be held uh, ransom for content <laughs> that we're go. going to be putting out. Uh, don't want to announce that yet because I don't know exactly what we're going to be able to accomplish soon but uh i'm hoping that march is a big time for the moist boys brand of podcasts between 
the Moist Boys, His Dork Materials, uh, Action Boys, hopefully makes a triumphant return, and Moist Boys Views continues um, putting out reviews on a regular basis in a, in a timely fashion when the app that I use properly works. Um, also, coming up in March... We've got the Emerald City Comic Con coming up. Yeah, Moist Boys are going to Comic Con. Uh, uh, Some of us are going to every day, and all of us are going to at least most of the days. So we should get a good good selection of things uh, to talk about when those come out. Uh, Depending on how it goes, I'm not sure how we're going to uh, put out that content, but we'll probably do... Something uh, we'll keep at an least eye on. Do a like weekend breakdown. Yeah. Um, we may also have something uh, in the pipeline for that will be recorded during a, perhaps a collabo, a little bit of a, a collabo labba ding dong, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> or if you don't, now? we got the swinging ding dongs. Nothing but nothing <laughs> but okay. Um, big swing and collabos <laughs> left and right uh so yeah this some some things some things to you know we're we're uh <laughs> i keep i keep trying to work it we're laying down the pipe um <laughs> <laughs> we're laying some pipe we're laying down. some pipe uh and so it's uh yeah we got some some things to keep an eye out for and, and if you want to and uh i might do like Barely in barely barely intelligible drunken on the drive home recordings from each day of <laughs> E Triple C. I don't know yet. Depends how I feel. I suppose it's going to be a long day, so I don't I don't know what's going to be. Uh, there's going to be a lot of goings on. Yeah, for that. So uh, keep on in, how long this, the to- how loud the toddler screaming. Yeah. Um. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. Uh, we should be able to at least get at least one ep- good episode out of ECCC, so there's fun stuff. Also, keep an eye out on our Instagram and Twitter. I'm sure we'll take a lot of photos to put up over there, so that should be exciting. Uh, if you are going to ECCC and you ECCC us, ECCC, <laughs> come and say hello. <laughs> um, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so, without further ado... Uh, we're talking episode six of Picard. Uh, someone else is going to have to I, do the IMDb. Uh, oh, shit. Give me a second. Uh, um, I'm duties. I do not have my telephonic device on my person right now. Where did that go? The what? Your, your phone. It's uh, charging. Oh, okay. Uh, I, The Impossible Box, I want to say, is the name of the episode. It that is sounds the name right, of the actually. Episode, yep. Well, it kind of sounds wrong, but it is the right I mean, name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely sounds wrong, just like the beginning opening scenes. Is that the dream sequence? Uh, or is that the flashbacks? Or oh, is I that guess the... it's it's the dream sequence that leads into the... Yeah. Uh, so I guess a little bit of background for um, most of our listeners who have not been listening along to our episodes about Picard. There are a couple of tropes that this show has been doing pretty consistently. Barfy tropes. Uh, one, nothing happens in every episode. Two, uh, every episode so far has been getting the band back together. Uh, get, make it like the, we have now finally reached, or at the end of the episode before this, they had finally reached the Council of Rivendell to go on the mission. And that was five episodes, five hours into this 10-hour 10 hour, 10 hour, uh, adventure, quote-unquote. Um, ordeal. Yeah, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, really uncomfortable, romantic uh, relationships between really old men and women who are not old enough to drink yet, or were not old enough to drink when the relationship started. Or just young enough to be their children. Yeah, all uh, pretty close. Uh, so, all over the place. Yeah, it's been all over the place. Been real gross. Um, so nothing but uncut daddy dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, a bunch of F-bombs and S-bombs and GD bombs uh, all over the place God. in a family television series, which I know some people don't what have an issue with. should be a family television series, yeah. I should say. Uh, I know some people don't have an issue with that, but my, like, for me, it's just, it's 
It's supposed to be a show that the family watches together, and I would not watch this show with anybody we, I was not doing a podcast with. We don't watch the show with the three-year-old. <laughs> yeah. No. Four. Oh, so he's the four-year-old. Four. Oh, yeah. my God, four. Yeah, not Oh, the, yeah, Moist like, Boys. Moist Boys fans, we uh, we had a birthday up in the, his house. We did. The Screaming Banshee is a whole year older now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're listening so, to this in the future, this is it's meaningless. So <laughs> yeah, he's probably an old man now, <laughs> and the sun has exploded. Uh, we are all we're all long dead. We're all long dead. We have ceased to be. But uh, yeah, the the <laughs> the tiny person that we frequently make jokes about is now four years old. So congrats to him. Congratulations on not dying for another 365 days. Hey, yeah, con- I was going to say congrats to us. We've kept that tiny thing alive. <laughs> when all they want to exist on is cookies. Yeah. 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 Somehow he's not morbidly obese. <laughs> <laughs> and he is alive. We did it. We did it. Uh, speaking of things that are alive, uh, this episode... <laughs> Uh, the the show is about a an android named Soji that doesn't know she's a robot. Uh, this begin this episode begins with a dream sequence where she's walking down a hallway. She walks into a room and then she wakes up. Uh, then we have some a really uncomfortable snuggling scenes between an old man and a a woman that's not old enough to drive yet. Uh, that's probably to drive yet. She's drink she's and drive. 20. Well, that's nobody's dead. old enough to drink and drive. <laughs> I am, goddammit. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's. Oh, it's she all... just, she just. So the actress herself just turned twenty-one in January. Oof. The um, big the, oof. The actor that plays her love interest just turned thirty-six <laughs> um, last year. Or so, um, kudos to Star Trek uh, producers for knowing that age is just a number. <laughs> <laughs> you rob that cradle, bros. Yeah. Um, and so her love interest is played by an actor named Harry Treadaway, which we've all seen in other various shows, and he's been good in those. But he's incredibly miscast in this series. He's supposed to be the dashing, incredibly handsome, dreamy, uh, scallywag spy character he's supposed to be james romulan james romulan bond yeah a little bit uh Uh, the issue is that his like everything about him looks like trash (laughs) like i'm looking at a picture of him like a real world like on a red carpet somewhere yeah like not kind of fine like not a bad looking dude yeah but like in this show (laughs) he looks awful and everybody is still telling me that he's like the hottest piece of ass yeah. on the artifact. And I really just do not buy it. Yeah. The we'll get, we'll, well, there's a character um, that was on TNG named Hugh, who has returned for this series, uh, who also, who uh, makes mention of a dashing, a dashing young Romulan spy that's on his ship. And I was like, is he talking about Narek? <laughs> who's played by Harry Treadaway. Like, is there another Romulan that we haven't met yet? Um, So, yeah, they have a scene together, and I don't think anything interesting happens in this. Like, that's the, been the running theme of this series, is that these two characters, Soji and Narek, have, it's just been treading water this whole time, because, yeah. as I said before, this the series has been gathering the the... The fellowship, the fellowship of the traveling pain. of the donut ring, um, which Picard needs to sit because he's got he's old. So. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. Uh, that's who sad knows if he man. does or not? No. Um, <laughs> I'm done with that. Uh, Picard does, or uh, Patrick Stewart does get to do a little walking in this episode, which is pretty nice to see him yeah. getting some cardio while getting paid. Um. Yeah, the other thing about this episode, another like recurring problem that this series has of not enough Picard is that he doesn't show up until way into this episode. Yeah. Because you got the Soji and Narek boring stuff, and then you have uh, the Captain Rios and... Uh, Doctor... Doctor Gerardi. Yep. Oh, which as soon as that scene started, Heather was like, they're going to fuck. Yep. Immediately, it was like, 
They're gonna do. They, I particularly said, if they have sex, I'm gonna scream. Yeah. Right now. And because he's playing shirtless soccer yeah. alone in the ship. Which I was like, who plays soccer? On a sh-? And you guys were like, well, he's Spanish. He's got to play soccer. Because that's how this show feels about people that. Like, oh, you're of this one ethnicity. What's the like most? For the, for those of you that have listened to our past episodes, if you're Irish, you say he's working <laughs> with the angels now. Yeah, and that's how you know that the character that's is how Irish. Irish. Uh, if he's Hispanic, well, he plays soccer, obviously. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So like, he's playing shirtless soccer by himself in the ship, and then Doctor Gerardi walks out in and- a, like a super tight tank top, which I was not going to complain about. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't gonna... I ain't and then gonna, they ensued with the, oh, you can't sleep either conversation. Yeah. Which always leads to the... Well, maybe we should... Pow. Yeah. Like, maybe we should figure pow, out a way to pow, wear pow, each other pow, out. Pow, 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 so, pow. But they did a nice, like, little tricksy of, like... I was like, oh, are they? Oh, no, they're not. Oh, look at that. She's she's like, I know when I'm making a mistake. And, like, starts to walk away. And then, nope, I was right. You and were right. They were. Joshua was almost right in his assumption that, nah, he's not old enough for her. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, there are no r- romantic relationships with characters of a appropriate age difference. So. No. Which, as we've said before, if you're, if you're with someone that's a diff- that's age difference, have at you. But... You're not getting paid to do it by a third party, so that, that changes things a little bit, I think. Yeah. Um, I think after that, it goes. Well, back I thought to... it went from. I couldn't remember if it went from um, Soji and Narek to Narek and his. Oh, his gro- his weird sister. His in sister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it could be, but again, they're just repeating the same conversation they've already had three times now. Yeah, and like I just I don't remember the chain of events. Like, yeah, the only thing with that scene is they introduced Chekhov's Rubik's cube. Yeah. Which, I mean, if it had like, it's the show turns things that aren't so anything sorry-ish. into <laughs> things like this. But like, if he just had a box that had poison in it nobody would have gave, given a shit but they had to like turn it into a scene to kill time yeah and that's Which like, is a, like a huge thing that this show does yeah just killing killing oh, time speaking the- of so like <laughs> on, on the topic of that this show is fucking awful about just spinning its wheels and having characters say the same thing three different times in order to fill their time slot of 43 minutes this episode has <laughs> the fucking hubris to be 53 <laughs> minutes long. What the fuck is that about? Um, also, that's a callback to what? Episode two. two. Yeah. They, <laughs> Which did, is just fucking they did awful. give us five minutes of action this time. So. Yeah. Yeah, we did get, we got some action. We got like the like, story I feel like finally what happened. The story finally happened. I feel like what would have been on the cutting room floor for that like to get that 10 minutes out of there would have been like i don't think we need all of this super pertinent picard ptsd borg stuff and they would have cut that yeah and left all of the like n- unnecessary bullshit instead yeah because <coughs> um i was gonna make a, a quick point up about oh so for those of you that haven't listened to our other episodes we were all pretty pretty hopeful and high on episode one i think i gave it an eight something uh i thought i I can't remember i'd have to go listen back but i feel like we were in neighborhood of just like kind of sevens across the board maybe seven and a half was the highest maybe but it was definitely like oh this is this is a good show let's be interesting to see where this goes yeah uh, episode two, I think I was too generous. It's maybe one of the worst episodes of TV I've seen in a long time. Oh, yeah. Just, it's all over the place. Nothing happens. All the characters are awful. <laughs> the fucking, the, I still, I still, I have like nom flashbacks to the conversation between Commodore O and, and Rizzo and Rizzo like I, just, I can't with this fucking show sometimes uh, that it'd be nice if that that scene was on YouTube because that is like indicative of everything wrong with this yes. show where it's like a good five to seven minute long scene of two characters talking back and forth at each other and you learn nothing 
and they're vague about shit we already know. Yeah. You don't learn who they... We don't know what's... Go- at the end of the scene, you don't know what's going on, who they are, why they're doing it, what anything means, what they were talking about. No, we know what they're talking about because as an audience, we've already been shown what the fuck they're talking about. They're acting like we don't know what they're talking about. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because everybody involved in this fucking conversation knows what the other one's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And then they do the reveal of like the this next scene after that reveals that Rizzo is Narek's sister and it's like, oh, so you gave us a mystery and then we're just immediately it's like, no, 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 don't worry. It's not a mystery. Yeah. The, the true mystery about this show is what's what why we're why it's, why, <laughs> what's why supposed it's still to be going. happening. <laughs> um I think the thing I was thinking during the, this sixth episode is that if this was the third episode, I think we would be fine with everything. Like if episodes two, three, four, and five were one episode, and this was like episode, maybe we could, ep- do, we could do that. Maybe two Some episodes. Editing, and you could do that. <laughs> yeah. Get just, on it, internet. Just keep the Picard stuff. Cut everything else. Turn it into like one or two episodes. Anytime Raffi's on the screen, cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if this was like episode three or four, I think we would still be going along with this series because like you can wait three episodes for like the action to kick off. Yeah. You six. can't wait until 51% of the way through something. <laughs> like six episodes in and we're still waiting for the story to start? Yeah. That's a Like that's what, so when I was saying uh, I was going to throw a little bit of a curveball, once the story actually started happening in this episode, yeah, I was kind of just like, man, you know what? I don't hate this, but this show has literally like burned through all of my goodwill, <laughs> but I can't be bothered to give a fuck. Yeah, I would say from 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 the with the exception of the Raffi scenes because there's she has like two her and Captain her and Rios have like three useless scenes that don't do anything to advance the story like per episode. Well, yeah, but especially in episode six, <laughs> especially in those episodes, because like he puts her to bed and again, like if the. That, is Again, old... I, we don't give two craps that Rafi has a kid who doesn't love her. We don't. Yeah. Like, like the, move on. The Let's thing just... that this show, like, that's the old thing, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. Well, this show tells you a thousand times because it can't tell you just once. Because, like, we, we know this. We know we, ha- we have all this information about the character Rafi. And she's telling Captain Rios, we don't get anything out of that as, like, other than another scene. Yeah. And then later on, they have another scene together. And then after that, they have another scene together. And every each time, it's like them learning things we already know. And then the scene ends. And it, they don't affect the plot at all. Like no. them knowing that Soji's an android. Or I can't remember what the point of that scene was. Them realizing it's a trap. It's them. Uh, it's them talking yeah. about the fact that Picard found her because he checked in. Yeah, and that they Romulans must already know the the Hiwat. There's a bunch of uh, Dune words for those of you that read uh, uh, Frank Herbert. There's a bunch of Dune words in this that they have trying to pass off as Romulan, and I don't believe I did it for not one second. Realize like how bad it was. I've listened to you say it on the podcast, but I wasn't really paying attention. And this episode again, because I'm very very irritated with this, with this show. <laughs> um, this episode, I was not looking at the TV screen. I was looking at my phone doing something, and kept hearing the words, and I was like, "There's a fucking another one. There's a fucking another one. There's a fucking another one." It's a problem. It's, it's a, a bad it's problem. Bad. Um, fuck, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, okay. So I feel like this episode, um, I understand that she is like, that Rafi is in like a bit of a depression right now because of the whole goings on with her son and everything like that. Um, but I feel like this episode is trying to make up for all of the legwork of being like, oh, she has substance abuse issues. And so they pour it all into this episode of just having her just be like drinking a, and smoking at the same fucking time. yeah and they're just like oh yeah we were supposed to have that be a character trait that she's trying to overcome that we just didn't mention until her son called her out for it we should probably show that at some point yeah because up to that point like she teen 
before then, she drinks two bottles of wine and vapes a couple times, yeah. and that's mm-hmm. about it. That's about it. And it's not, it doesn't, at no point is it like, there's wine bottles littered everywhere. It's just like, she's just in the middle of her day, she's day drinking some wine, like not a fucking problem, and just vaping off of her f- fucking little plant that she's growing, like, which, that's cool, whatever, like, I don't, like. She needed to do the um, Jeff Goldblum, at, like, towards the end of Independence Day, where he just, like. Drinking out of the bottle, stumbling around, throwing shit everywhere. Just yeah. Like, do that, and you're like, oh, this person has problems. Not living in a like a picturesque <laughs> desert with like a nice double wide trailer and like fresh plants that she can vape whenever she wants, and everything's great, and she's just bitching about it. You're like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> and like, again, either you get the information every episode that you've already known, or you get it in reverse order that you needed you needed to because yeah. like there's a lot there's stuff about Raffi and Picard and the Romulans um which this for those of you that don't watch it this is kind of continuing off the 2009 Star Trek which we mentioned in episode 1 that was kind of cool where they took a storyline and they're continuing it which is you know it's nice to have a storyline <laughs> it would be nice if this show had one yeah um it'd be nice if the show remembered who their characters are and don't make them to be out to be douchebags yeah, you're the the fucking slow clap moment when Rafi makes the Rafi makes the. Uh... So first off, the phone call was awkward to watch because the again, music was really not the right music. It was not the yeah. right music. They're trying to shove a bunch of substance abuse in our face quickly, while making Rafi look like she's doing some miraculous thing. Yeah. But she's not, and then she's, like, exhausted from making the one phone call. Because like, she's pretending to be sober enough to be the person who can be on a phone call. And yeah. Like, and, and then so. it's just, like, it's a whole fuck. And then to have Picard do the douchebag slow collapse. Does the fucking Pelosi clap at her as she's being <laughs> dragged away by Rios? Terrible. And it's like, if that scene had been, one, the camera moved way too much for just, mm-hmm. like, a back and forth. Like, I was getting... I was just like, okay, camera, this is not an exciting action scene. You're not going to trick us into thinking yeah. that it is. Oh, that's what that was another thing. The the scene between Rios and Gerardi when they're talking to each other, the camera was just set up on like a half circle track, and it was just pacing that track around them. <laughs> so much, it was so awful. Yeah, but like the music during the Raffi talking to her old friend scene, like was comedic music kind of kind, yeah. like it, it wasn't tense it wasn't like oh if this fails everything it was much like oh is she gonna be able to do it yeah. i was and like she gives us the and then she does the like oh well we need that paperwork because we're gonna be there real soon and then it like but there's never there's never tension in the moment and there's like it, there's no tension and it doesn't like the climax of the scene is the music fades out and then picard starts clapping at her and you're just like I guess this scene is over now. Yeah. <laughs> and then it cuts to commercial with the TNG fanfare music. And it was like, or was this that? Was this yeah. that scene? Yeah, that was this that was scene. that scene. Then it was like, God. Da-da. Like, no, don't. This That was not earned here yeah. at all. Um, but they do get back. Well, we do cut, get back from commercial eventually. Um, there's, I want to say there's more soji in there i think this is is that this no i really blank out the soji stuff because it, it's incredibly dull yeah I remember what order it's in but it's probably about when that happens yeah like these things happen because they're kind of simultaneous picard and the team show up at the board cube and she starts investigating well she like, was oh, investigating before so they were yeah she has lunch way. with Narek. yeah and she yeah. has lunch with Narek. And he's still trying to plant the seeds, plant the seeds and trying to get her to question whether she's human or not without setting her off. But does it in a way that's so bad that's like, that's going to fucking set her off real fast. He's talking. Oh, he talks to her about her phone calls with her mom. And because she's like, she always falls asleep. Yeah. She's like, I, you know, I tried telling my mom about my dream, but I forgot because I fell asleep. And he's like, do you often do that? Cause then your, cause your phone calls are always seventy seconds with her. It's like first off, what, why, why? Okay, anyways. Why would you possibly know that? Yeah, he's like, I can show you the records. Dun, dun, dun. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Super stupid. Anyway, so he, she starts to investigate her photos and her journal entries and her stuffed and all of childhood her stuffed animals and all of her belongings. And they are 30, 37 months. Yeah. Approximately 37 months. Yeah. I hope you like hearing a robot say that. Is she going to say love? Approximately 37 months. Like, I. I Approximately. I get it. Months. Like you're you're showing like <gasps> the character like panicking and just like continually using a thing, but like you don't have to you can just show the, the full quote every time. Mm-hmm. Like you can have it. Like yeah, you can just like the a way to do it would be like you can just have the you edit it so that the audio of that recording just becomes like this white noise almost of like how many things she is scanning and how many times it's starting to like every time she scans something the quote gets shorter and shorter until it's just 37 37 37 37 and like that is like the the anxiety of what she's going through is being put on you because that quote is like that time is getting tighter and tighter um or you just have it say approximate aid 37, 37 months. months. Like, Approximate age. Yeah. 37 months. And then you have music while she's scanning age. a bunch of stuff that we'll know as an audience by her reaction. That it's all saying the same thing. Yeah. Like it's yeah. But unfortunately, the show does not trust its audience because, as we've mentioned before, you'll see the same exact scene in c- several consecutive episodes <laughs> giving you the same information. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say everything after that's pretty good, though. Like as much as I've been down on it, like yeah, once, once Picard, gets, once Picard on the cube, gets in the cube, once Soji starts to lose her goddamn mind, really, yeah, yeah, and once you get past the approximate age, thirty-seven <laughs> yeah. months, you're you get to a good place. She starts throwing shit and running out, and it's like, okay, now the story is now the story is going to happen. Um, I will say, and this is going to be a a boo hiss moment for me for a second. I wasn't a huge uh, TNG fan as a child because I Voyager was my was my shit and uh so I I did not recall that Picard was Borg before until we started talking about it last episode <laughs> <laughs> I did not recall it um and so to see the flashes and like the the fact that even if you don't remember even if you didn't watch that part of TNG like it was nice for me to be like, oh, I can get caught up really fast yeah. with them not like having him tell somebody his entire story of being a boy. Well, I also I had a love hate moment where this show loves having people watch their like hologram TVs and then shooting them through it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Having like the over, the Lacutus overlay like on his face and having that line up perfectly. Cool. And it was like, that's kind of cool. That's- they kept doing it though. And it was like, yeah, we fucking get it. Yeah. It he was, was Lacutus. Like, way too long. Because he's like touching his face. And yeah. Like, way too long. It also doesn't help that they did that to Soji two episodes ago. Yeah. With yep. a random character we don't care about. Yep. Yeah. And they did it, I think, when Gerardi was... Did they do it when Gerardi was watching the the cooking show that she and Bruce Maddox did? She, you just can. She's like, they're having her watch it, and you can see her through it. Yeah, that, but that, that's what I mean. It like didn't they line like, up, it's but over, it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, if they hadn't done it before, now it would have been really cool. That would have been like yeah. a really cool like thing to to do. But like, yeah, they've it's just they fucking love doing it, <laughs> and it's like this this was the appropriate time. The other times made absolutely no fucking sense. The heater is very loud next yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's being. I don't think it's being picked up, but yeah, it's a really loud heater. It was just the... really loud to me. I was like, the fuck is Because the grill was closed, so the air was trying to escape through it. Oh. But it was like, so I just had to open it up, so it's fine now. The effects don't look great when Picard is walking over the big chasm area. No. no. It looks a little screwy, no. but. Uh, I was fine with it because it didn't last super long. Uh, and then, again, I think if this had been episode three or four, watching uh, Picard and Hugh finally meet again after like 30 years. Yeah. Like, I almost felt something. I was like, oh, something's happening. But then I was like, <laughs> it's taking so fucking long it's to get so here. so fucking long. So much shit has happened. Yeah. Uh, so I, I have a couple things that I am just not sure about as far as like what this show so we've already seen we we've already seen Picard's like 
post Borg PTSD in First Contact. Like that was the whole point of that movie. Yeah. Um and I feel like in that movie he overcame that. But then at the same time I also understand that like he is a much older man now. Also is, PTSD doesn't just go away. No, I know, and that's like It doesn't just go away. You have it's something that you work on your entire life yeah. for the rest of forever. Like it can become a dull roar, but people with PTSD, if you put them back in a situation like having Picard walk onto a Borg ship, it would do that to them. Yeah. They would right. have a panic attack which could lead to hallucinations. Yeah. The okay, thing that's fair. Thank you. For, thi- like, I, I was like, I, I feel like we've already had him deal with this, and but like, yeah. yeah. The, the thing I like about this better also is that it's more Star Trekky in that the way that the show has him deal with it is realizing that, like they even say in the episode, he's like, oh, they're not monsters. They're they're like yeah, people underneath you're showing, machines. Yeah, you're showing what they really what what they really are victims yeah not monsters and i because like in first contact his quote-unquote getting over it is just like blowing the shit out of him <laughs> so like, yeah that's like, fair so this like, has uh, a surprisingly like uh subtle moment from this show or a uh surprisingly um what's the word i'm looking for uh Nuanced, nuanced. Yes, thank you. A nuanced moment from the show about something, and they it just took him fucking six episodes to get there, and it just it's, yeah, yeah. Because, like, I and I think you know, facing a thing and like shooting it is like a good way for you to think that you've gotten over something. Yeah, but then like actually being in the middle of it and just being having to accept the fact that it's not what it was. Yeah, everything is okay. Yeah. Um. So I think that's. That being said, this fucking scene is way too goddamn long or it's just in the wrong spot because while this is happening, we know that Soji is with Narek going to go do something that's possibly oh, going to trigger yeah. her or, or panic attack her, which, again, we're on episode six. Like, we're not, like, I'm really glad that we got to see the Picard stuff, but it needed to be in a different spot I th- <laughs> or else the Soji shit should not have happened directly before this yeah i think if because he tell he tells Hugh like almost right away that he needs to find her yeah like if he, then if he, he was like let's go on a tour of the hospital yeah which i was like oh, i don't know i don't really know i don't really think this is this is the right place but then at the end of that scene when you realize it was like Hugh was like okay i'm gonna help you but i'm gonna show you this first yeah. If they had just switched that around, where yeah. Picard's like, Hugh, we're here, and he goes and shows him the thing, it's like, this is really good work you're doing here. So while I'm here, I need you to help me find somebody. I think that yeah. would have, like... Which would have been better. It also would have been better if, again, it's the pace... This show has a pacing issue. Yeah. Where it can't... This The Picard scene with the, the ex-Borg is a scene that is... It's a really good piece of television, and I'm really glad that it was in there. It's just that this show has an awkward time, even when it does something right, doing it wrong. And it's, I think first off, it's it's completely like you're right. It should have been switched. It's also put in the wrong in the episode the wrong time. The Soji shit should have just happened after it, and we would have been fine. Yeah, I think part of that is that this show has an issue with two scenes being connected. Like it's they true. think that they have to have a scene and then cut to a different character. And then cut back to the character. Like, yeah, you, there. I can't think of any scenes where it's just two characters progressing through the story because, for some reason, they think, oh, people are going to get bored if they see the same characters well, two we have scenes an ensemble, in a row. So we have to show the entire ensemble. Excuse me, your ensemble minutes. is trash. Though, this isn't so. Star Trek ensemble. This is Star Trek Picard. <laughs> so give me that Picard shit. Um. So it, that's yeah. Then uh, finally. Narek and Soji have a good scene together when they're in that yeah. weird room. In the maze, which is another Dune word maze. I don't remember yeah. what it's I, called. I, I, think, <laughs> I think if... And, like, they're doing... I, I, I don't know why they did this love story thing. It doesn't make any sense. If it had been Narek and Soji as mentor and mentee, that would have made sense. But, again, like, the other problem is Soji works on this board cube... Doing something that we're never quite 
totally explained. Like the one time we see her working, she's just at a keyboard typing away while other people are doing all the work. Yeah. But we're also told by Narek that she does brilliant work. And I'm not sure what that brilliant work is. Um, I think was the maze called Muad'Dib? It was, was that not right? called Muad'Dib. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was called. <laughs> it was not. Um, God damn it. <laughs> um. Jonathan's just over there Googling dude Googling words. Dune words. <laughs> right. Just to be a dick. <laughs> I'm actually trying. I'm Googling like Romulan maze. What's the Romulan maze called? Um, <laughs> but it's actually a good scene. Interesting things happen. The characters do do what they are supposed to. The actors do a convincing job with delivering their lines and being relating to each other as characters. Yeah, this was, I feel like, the first scene where... Like, him leading her through it and, like, getting her to focus and, like, was I feel like the first time from both of them that I've just been like, hey, this is even remotely compelling. Uh, part of that is we mentioned this um, very early on because he's a, he's, he's a sad sack of shit the whole t- the rest of the time. Like, he's like, oh, I bet you don't want to talk to a sad guy like me that lost his family, huh? Yeah. And she's like... Oh no, I really want to. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> and then every other scene, he's like, Oh, you guys do a real good job here, huh? I guess, can I go ahead and tag along? Or he's like, Oh, I can't tell you how I feel about you because uh, I, everything's going wrong. Yeah. And it's like, finally, this one, you're like, Oh, this is the character they were supposed to be portraying this entire time. Like someone that's actually like able to command the things around him. Yeah. Which and is- even like the scene, like the scenes with. His sister, he is the sub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no, at no point does he have any agency until this exact scene. Yeah. And that's, and that's an issue when he needs to be the character that's pulling the strings, but it's never in a way that you believe. Cause I guess I can't tell you what my real name is. Yeah. (sighs) Jesus. Um, so she, uh, has a memory flashback. Um, he like does some, he does his, uh, I can't think. This is another, this is another thing that happens in Dune too, where characters will like speak commands and other people have to listen to them. The Benny Gesserit. Benny Gesserit. Yeah, they can do it. Um, it's so he, the uh, voice. yeah, the he voice. gives her the voice. Um, he slaps the button and turns his chair around. And then it's been Christina Aguilera the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I don't know. Um, so she find, So I think it was the last episode we found out what... Finally found out what him and his sister were looking for. They were looking for where the rest of the androids are. Which, yeah. Because... Wait, we found that out last episode, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. they're talking about where the nest is. Yeah, which we found out... In, in the, so in the first episode, we found out there were two of them. Which I'm very confused on why they think there's more. Because in a show where they would explain the story, we would know. <laughs> right? Like, so, but we've no, been told there's two. We've been told it. that there's two. Yeah. And do we, they think that the other one? They have to know the other one was. Killed. Yeah, they know that. Like, cause yeah, they know, Rizzo cause, was in charge of that. Yeah. Yeah. So they know the other one was killed. They know there's two. Why do they think there's more? Maddox there, is dead. He didn't tell us. Yeah. Like, I thought, like, maybe when we finally got to Bruce Maddox, he'd be like, and he got to talk to somebody he trusted, he'd be like, there's more or something well, like he that. He does he'd be like, tell. like, find all of them or something. Like, something that would be a hint at it. Yeah. The cl- closest thing is that um, Maddox in the previous episode tells Vajazel that he needs to move because they're on to him. Yeah. Again, if you had made just two, that would be on to you. Yeah, and also, like, we know that he worked at the Daystrom Institute on Earth, so, like, is that what he's talking? Like, we don't know, we don't know the story. Yeah. We know a bunch of information. It just... That pertains to nothing as far as we're concerned. Like, the only (laughs) two characters who have talked about there being more than just the two of them, which is now just one of them, are are Rizzo and and Narek. And Gonzo. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just going to call him from now on. Rizzo, Rizzo and Gonzo. And Gonzo. They do have the same kind of relationship, though. <laughs> they bit. do, 100%. Uh, 
Rizzo's like always grabbing Gonzo's. Uh, him being the rat, just so we're all good. Cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah. there is. So we have to now find which in a galaxy is probably more than one. Now that we've 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 now been told, <laughs> it's a planet with, with two, two red two planets. Red. Two red moons, moons, two red moons, and, and electric, electric, electrical storm in space. Which I there has to be a better way to say. Like, got to be like, come on. There ha- also, like, use like, a bullshit word. Just come up with something. Don't just I like that is from that's from and that line has always bugged me in uh, the 2009 J.J. Abrams Star Trek, where they're like, it's like an electrical storm in space. <laughs> it's like there has to be a better way to say that. <laughs> yeah, this fucking can't just say an electrical storm. bullshit. Like, seriously, it's it's a fucking it's clouds and electricity it's an going electric fucking storm. bonkers. The end, like, it's just a thunderstorm, or yeah, it's just like an electrical it's a, storm. It's a lightning storm. And and uh, in also space, in <laughs> space. Why does it have to be in space? Why can't it just be in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is just higher than what it would be here. The cloud. I don't. Just I don't know. So also, what? Fuck off, peeps. What are the chances that this memory of hers? Of being a doll on a workbench during a thunderstorm just happened to be during a thunderstorm, and that information is in no way necessary to finding, like, they're going to be looking for this electrical storm that just happened to be happening. Because the characters in the show saw the same thing that we did, not listen to her words. That's that's where you got to go. <laughs> Because um, they saw also, that the le- electricity was shooting behind the planets, not how she said it, where there's two two red planets and electricity in the sky. Also, this isn't a memory so uh, much as it is random bits of information that her brain is trying to make a cohesive thing out of. That's what sh- Narek and, and Gonzo and Rizzo talked about, <laughs> um, is that there's a, there's a difference between... A dream that is just a memory versus because she's an AI and it's a flood. And it's oh my god, I'm not actually gonna do yeah, it. Don't, I'm not. Yeah, don't. It's not actually a memory. <laughs> it's just random bits of information that her brain is trying to make cope. synapse firing. It's to tra- It's like- it's the AI versus what her sub- supplanted memories are doing, and they're right. trying to make sense of it. So it's not actually a memory. So what are the chances that this particular memory would have the planet in it? The location of anything. Yeah. That just turned out to be real convenient timing for them. Yeah. See, this whole time I thought they were just created the Daystrom Institute because I thought that's where, because he was, they said that, because in episode one, Dr. Girardi said that's where he was working until a couple of months earlier. Yeah. I thought I could be mistaken. I don't think it was a couple months. Does she say months? I don't remember. He looked. They looked pretty similar to when they were macking on each other. And that's true. And it might have been months, but maybe he had like an off-site thing. And she said maybe. flat out that they had been. Um, he said that it was her her research that made it invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, is that all coming? Yeah. <laughs> my bad. Um, my my facial area, my hair area got itchy. Both hair areas. Yeah. All through. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, uh, words, <laughs> words are hard. Okay, who so knows? I, who knows I, what I, the fucking I only know is the timeline now. Apparently, is the all of Soji's shit has been around for three, just over three years. Yeah, but now apparently Maddox has not been missing for that long. So, so who the fuck now? Is? At the eleventh hour, they have revealed that the race against time is not just to get Soji. The race against time is actually now to beat the Romulans to the planet. Where the rest of her is. Possibly. Yeah. Which is good storytelling. <laughs> is it? Putting a ticking clock that's, it because... that's actually a tangible tangible thing instead of just like, we got to get there in 12 hours. Who well, knows now we how have long eight that? hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, are there actually other ones? And 
does Soji know if there are other ones? So, because here's the thing is that, yes, we just gave this time clock if we have to find them before the Romulans do, except for... Nobody knows that yet. Nobody knows that yet besides the Romulans. So, if there's not more of them, then the Romulans are going on a wild goose chase, which yeah. I would like that storytelling very much, actually. They just get there and it's like... <laughs> And oh. then two episodes later, they come back. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take two episodes for them to get out there because they got to get the team together. They got to yeah. get the team together. <laughs> um, and if there are more of them, then how at this point do we get do do the rest of the people get this knowledge? Because nobody has this knowledge unless no. Soji actually was hearing what Rizzo was saying to Narek, which I don't think she was. Which I don't think she was. Because they're using their built-in Bluetooth headset. Yeah. <laughs> built-in at birth. So yeah, the Chekhov's box comes back into play after all this information comes out and he tries to kill Soji. Uh, there's some more kind of goofy, fast motion effects where she's punching through the floor. Uh, also, I definitely thought that that was poison air by the way she started for, to react. And then when the guy went to, when the Romulan went to go open the door and Narek stopped him and he goes, wait, the radiation. Maybe robots choke on radiation. We don't know. Well, I mean... She ain't got lungs, my dude. She's a robot. She's a robot. She got, there's, they're not really robots, though, because they don't have... I don't know if Sorry, they've ever is, been... That is a flesh and something AI? It's not clear yeah. how a, deep the robots go. Yeah. Right. She's got a working J, so who knows? I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> there are plenty of things that are working vajays that are not. <laughs> uh, because, so there's another show on ABC right now about secret robots. And they also. Is it called Secret Robot? Because I would watch well, that show. I would watch show. something called Secret it's Robot. It's called. Somebody get on to make a show called Secret Robots. Yeah. Jonathan and I are watching it for you. <laughs> secret Robots. Uh, but in that one, they are also robots that can, can, that can pass as humans oh. they have organs and all types of stuff so i don't know if we have that amount of information what? on this show though which yeah. one is it on it's on abc, it's on ABC. Uh, i can't remember what it's i've watched uh, some of the episodes they're not good really <laughs> yeah wait is it the show we watched like the beginning of a pilot of a show where like a cop Finds a little girl in a plane crash. Yeah, that one. It's that one? Yeah. Fuck, what oh, is that called? that was a good first episode. I actually really liked that pilot. It was called... To be, to, to, for all is of our listeners... Down the hill from there? That's not... This, just be aware that's, that might not mean what you think it means. <laughs> Based Wait, on what the did person. I just say? <laughs> no, what Heather said it was a really good first episode. Oh, oh. But there is, there's limits. There, there's... There's tolerances amongst oh, some of us. Oh, I watch trash TV. <laughs> yeah. Trash. Um, I will say the first episode is the best episode. It is slowly going off the rails. Mm. Um, there's a lot of bad stuff happening. I don't, it was just a good. It's called time. Secret Robot. We're moving on. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I can't remember what I'm, what information is of. It's called Emergence. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Secret Robot sounds better. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but that Little would be on Sci-Fi is a Channel, robot, right? Yeah. Okay. Oops, spoilers for the spoilers. first three she's episodes. She's not an alien. No, she's okay. a robot. Rad. Um, so it's kind Allison of this. Allison Tallman, that's her name. Yeah. I really like her. She was good in the first season of Fargo. Well, oh, yeah, because Faison's in that. That's why I wanted to watch it. Oh, is he? Yeah. Faison's yeah, he's actually, he's actually good in that. Because Faison's good in shit. Forget. I've only seen Scrubs, this, and... Clueless? Oh yeah. <laughs> um oh, no? Nope, I've oh, never seen it. Fuck. <laughs> it's that it's that one of those LA alien invasion movies that came out at the beginning of the de of the last decade. Oh, like uh Battle Los Angeles? It was the other one. Battleship? Cuz Battle Los Angeles was about the the soldiers that have to beat the aliens. Oh, yeah, he was and a there was of the Titans too. And there was another one where it's like DJs and party Party girls have to beat, have to escape the aliens. Oh, and I watched, Skyline? Yeah, I watched like the first 40 minutes. It was so dull. Like oh, nothing no. happened. Oh, he's also in what, the the exes that show? Yeah, that was a terrible show. That it was, was real a real bad. It was a, <laughs> I watched all of it. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that that right there is your baseline for Heather's threshold. <laughs> that was awful. I watched the whole thing. <laughs> Just like I like garbage TV. I can't help it. I don't like garbage reality shows usually, but I do like garbage TV. Yeah. Give me a shitty rom com and I'm there. <laughs> so anyway, so he punches through the floor and um, meets up with Picard and Hugh. Um, who okay when she meets up with picard he's pretty much just like hey come with me i'm gonna help you get out and she come stands with me if you there, want to live yeah, yeah. she stands there staring at him and he's like just trust me come with me and i was like bitch your options are this old white guy you don't know or the people trying to kill you you're dead either way possibly yeah. just go with the old white dude which the weird thing is in the first episode they uh, they allude to the fact that these two should know him because Dodge knows. She's like, so Dodge, I knew you even Dodge before I saw you on TV. To I think know him, but but that's because that they're spoilers. Data is it? It's not spoilers. It's in the first episode. It's in the it's first in the, episode. Yeah. But like, yeah, they are data. They essentially well, they're built from data's memory. One positron like... per row. So does that mean like he had like trillions of positrons? So that means there's like trillions of this. In the cloud, somewhere. an actor that like on this planet that they're going to find. Maybe oh my God, is Maybe data on the, the planet? That's what the electrical storm is. Is data? Is data? Data is the electrical storm. <laughs> data is the planet. I'm calling it now. He's going to make Chris Pratt try to kill his mom. Yep. Or something. <laughs> no, I don't he's going to kill Chris Pratt's mom. That, yeah, that's the one. And then and then Chris Pratt's going to be like. Motherfucker, you killed my mom. Yeah. Because every movie that came out in that two year span was like, everything's fine. You killed my mom. I hate you now. <laughs> blue blue light shoots up into I the sky. I definitely yeah. had to stare at you for a minute to be like, what fucking movie are you to? Oh, yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Chris Pratt's going to be in the show. I didn't <laughs> no, see that. No. <laughs> Sorry. There was, just, uh, there was just a lot of mom stuff and superhero shit for a while there. Between, why do you say that why name? Why do you say that name? <laughs> Which was then immediately followed by Tony, he was mind controlled. It wasn't him. I don't care. He killed my mom. And then which was then immediately too, followed you know, by fuck that. Which what? I said also my dad, but you know, fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. But then was then also followed by Wait, what? I gave your mom cancer. That kind of sucked. You killed my mom. This is so it was such a fucking weird trope for a minute there. Anyways, go with the old white guy. Sanji. Yeah. She yeah. she just it really irked me because she does it twice where she <laughs> takes a really long time to decide. And I'm like, you have no fucking options. Also, he's <laughs> with Hugh. You know Hugh. Yeah. Also, he's with Hugh. Like, come on. But she may, maybe doesn't trust Hugh right now. Right. Yeah. Like N- Narek's been boning her for the last who knows how long. And he just tried to kill her. Maybe your boss is going to try to kill her. But. You know for a fact that the people coming right at you are going to try to kill you. Why not go with the other bro for half a second? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the other thing that this episode clarifies that the, uh, that we should have already known way before is that the people that used to be Borg are actually alive. We didn't yep. know that until this episode. They never showed it. Nope. They yep. implied some of them were. We yep. thought, was it just the Romulans? Was so it- it's just so the last <laughs> ship to be assimilated by the cube. Okay, going back it was to a Romulan ship. episode three, when she gets when let's the, not <laughs> yeah. So when the prophecy bullshit starts coming out, God. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, so which they touch back on last episode, and we didn't talk about that. Um, so she the last ship to be assimilated by the cube was a Romulan ship, and they were the first Romulans to ever be assimilated by the Borg. And when they came out, when they became disconnected, the Rom the Romulans all went nussos. But the yeah. rest of the Borg that they have are fine. Yes, which we know now, which we didn't before, because right. all we saw were just like dead bodies on a table being ripped apart. Yeah. True. Um, also being reclaimed. Yeah. When, but not knowing whether or not they were dead. <laughs> yeah. Also, when which for a second I had a weird thought about that too this episode. Um when Picard's having his PTSD flashes, we see we go down into the the cube for a second. And we see like a Borg awaken. Oh, wake it up. Yeah. And I was like, did that just actually happen or was that a flashback? I think that is part I think that Because then later on when they're running as Hugh like a random dude is like Lacutus. Lacutus, a random Borg dude goes Lacutus. 
but we don't get to see him long enough to tell if he's actually. Full it was just. Of it was just a dude. It was just a dude. It was okay. just a dude. So that was a weird moment, and I was yeah. like, "What the hell is happening?" Because they do weird little shits like this. Also, what I just realized. So when we were pulling all the Bork pieces out, and we met last episode, the chica who sells Borg pieces off. I was like, what if the reclamation project is just selling shit to her and she's selling it off? I was like, who knows? Who fucking who knows? knows? Maybe that is what's happening. Um, yeah. Here's my concern about that. And I think we will learn more about that. The problem is the story has moved away from the Borg cube. So that means, and that's my concern about episode seven, I think there's going to be a lot of dicking around in episode seven <laughs> because nothing can happen. Yeah. I don't. Some of it only moved off the board cube, which comes to my biggest irk about the end of this episode of why the fuck did he leave Elnor? So for those of you that haven't, there's a character that haven't listened to every episode. There's a character called Elnor who doesn't, who does fuck all. Who does not sh- goddamn shit except for Forget not listening to Picard. Forget that he has an Australian accent. Oh, yeah, because he's from that. Australia. The actor is from Australia. This is the first episode and I've noticed it. Was it always there? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't remember. But I, he's had I, all he's of had, like, two lines of yeah, dialogue. He said the second line of dialogue for himself this episode. And Jonathan goes, does he have, has he always had an Australian accent? And I was like, he had an Australian accent. <laughs> Because like who the fuck knows? He taught. He says like four sentence, four yeah, words, and that's a sentence. I, I don't think he did though. I don't think he did he, either. I think his lines were. I up. don't think the kid version of him did. I didn't. I don't think. Uh, by the way, he had a total of like eight lines this episode. Yeah. I don't know. Because his because it was in budding. Yeah, was that in budding? See, so that that whole scene where he's like saying stuff like that, no accent. Nope. Yeah. Because it's not until the next scene where he's like. Throw another shrimp on the Bobby. <laughs> and I was like, where'd this guy come from? Christ. It's the ship. It's actually just another yeah, so for hologram. All, also people that he's, uh, yeah, <laughs> he's a fucking... <laughs> all the characters are he's holograms. He's an LMD. Oh. So for those of you that haven't listened along to every episode, uh, Captain Rios, the actor that plays him, gets to play a bunch of other holographic characters. And you can know which one's which because every character has a quote, different quote unquote accent, yeah. quote unquote. With all the eye rolls. <laughs> we say that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dr. Rios is British. Which I think, my, I'm guessing that's his real one because that's the most consistent one. Um, he's from London. I want to say, but he's been, he's like one of those people that's literally been all over the place. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I want to say that's his real one. Cause his, his Spanish accent is kind of like, I think I said this before it's New Antonio York. Banderas trying to do a New York accent. Yeah. It's not great. And he, and his he, Irish he is rolls in it every now and then. Yeah. His Irish is trash. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> Fortunately, it's only, it's only been that one scene, though, right? Yeah, it's only been the one scene where he's like, you don't have to worry about cards on the side of the angels. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, there's there's another character that has a slightly stronger Spanish, or only speaks Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell, you know it's him because he looks gross. He's got, like, long, shaggy hair. And he's, like, the pilot of the ship. I didn't do the <laughs> character design. No, you just, just, you can tell he's... He's Spanish. You can he tell he's Mexican because he looks fucking gross. Yeah. He's not Mexican. He's from Spain. Um. <laughs> you can tell because he looks gross. The sad thing about Rios is I feel like in a good show, I would be fine with his character, but unfortunately, none of these characters are anything. No. So it's an issue, especially when they keep cutting back to them, and I'm just like, why are we watching this? <laughs> and I don't know. Um. So, yeah. Uh, so... Soji and Picard step through an intergalactic portal yeah. to uh, Nep- Nepethan, Nepethany, Nepethany, Persephone. They're going to the planet that uh, Jonathan Frakes and Marina Sirtis are going to be on. Yeah, which you don't actually get to find out until the next time on. Yeah. Oh, uh, we because... were not supposed to talk about that, I thought. Yeah, well, we did, so... Whoops. 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 This is Moist Boys. So. I was going to say, because so, they don't shit? tell you. He just says a random planet, and then they go. And you're like, but how do you know that that's a safe fucking planet? Yeah. 
Base. Also, planets are huge. So if this is actually why they're going to that particular planet, fuck you. Because planets are a huge thing. <laughs> yeah. And how do you know you're going to get dropped off in the right fucking place? Maybe That'd be like us being like teleporting to Earth and then being like, I have a friend in Tokyo and then like we're going to go and then we get teleported on to foot Oklahoma. to Oklahoma <laughs> to be like, well, we're hoofing it now. To be fair, he told... Captain Rios to meet him on Nepethmini. Yeah. So he probably, maybe he told Hugh where they're actually going to go. Maybe. But the episode didn't, who knows? No. Um, yeah, you've seen the trailers for this show. You know that Jonathan Frakes is, com- is coming back. Yeah. Um, so fuck you if you don't. <laughs> um. <laughs> we're getting, we're, are we just getting extra salty now? <laughs> Like, hey, listener, fuck you. (laughs) I'm going to say it again. It is slightly encouraging that every episode has been slightly better. The last two were the same, I think. I think this one was an uptick from anything that's come before it, but that's because literally fucking anything happened in this episode. Yeah. I think I think I still liked episode one more just because the Soji stuff was only the last minute and a half. Yeah. So it had that going for it. Because it was real bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, Soji and Eric have been bad literally until this episode. Yeah. And now they're finally apart. <laughs> I And I'm worried that Eric's going to be doing more bullshit on the cube and that there's going to be a lot of drawn out stuff. Well, yeah, because Eleanor's there with you. Yeah, Eleanor and he were there. The guy that knows who Lacut- Lacutus is is there. Yeah. Any, any, like... They're just going to drag that oh, out. Oh, God. Do you think that was all just like hint dropping for bullshit they're going to try to... Yes. No. Um, Let and... me... Like, there's no fucking reason. A, there's no fucking reason they all couldn't have gone through the portal. Nope. Because, I mean, maybe well, Hugh, Hugh has to stay behind to close it. Yeah. So I'll give him that. Hugh has to stay behind to close it. Sure. Picard is talking to Rios. There's no... Are we... Are we told that there is no way to just beam them out? Yes, we are. Uh, there's a lot. There's a- they have to get a, they have to get permission because remember they couldn't just like land. They couldn't dock. They weren't allowed to dock. I, I they, just- the Romulans had to give a special beam for Picard to go. Well, yeah, onto they were the given cube. like a coordinate that like you beam in here and nowhere else. Yeah, it was. Like I assume that was all because of like red tape and bureaucracy nonsense no that's just romulans being romulans that's true i think raffi does say that they can't beam him out but i will say like as as complimenting the end like the last part of this episode there's some real bad editing in this because like there, it, it gets really messy you're not sure what's going on like i think raffi says that they can't beam him out which then, would make sense because Soji's running loose and they've already, Narek's already called her in. So they would block it for anybody to be able to be back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then during that conversation, everyone looks around and they're like, hey, where's Elnor? And then smash cut to Elnor chopping up a bunch of Romulans that like we didn't, we like we didn't see them appear. Like yeah. I was like, where did these guys come from? <laughs> Who know? Like even Picard and Soji, they were like, Huh, I guess we should be in this scene now. Like they were in a completely different, doing a different scene, and then they're like, "Oh, the camera's back behind us now." Like that was because they weren't even they weren't running in, they weren't drawing their, they were just standing there getting chopped up. Yeah, I was like, "Wait, what the fuck just happened, <laughs> folks?" This, this uh, of, of all the stuff that is good, there's a lot of bad stuff in this. Like even the good stuff is kind of bad. Oh yeah, um, so I I would equate this to like. Uh, if everybody has seen the the like rice TikTok going around right now of the like hundred thousand to million to billion thing, oh yeah, uh, the good stuff is the hundred thousands, <laughs> the bad stuff is the billion. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you've made it this far and you're one of our his dork materials listeners, uh, see ya. Because uh, we've already talked about what's going to happen though, and my concerns that. Everyone's just going to dick around. I, there's, I'm really worried there's going to be a bunch of scenes on that ship between the three really most unpleasant characters to be stuck with. 
Rafi Rios and Girardi. Girardi. I was really, I was, I was really up on Girardi the first two episodes, but then every episode since then they've just made it worse and worse. Yeah, you're just mad that you're an old, you're not an old man, <laughs> and so you you can't shoot your shot. Sure. <laughs> um, also, then, like, is she a cold blooded spy like she is in this one? Is she like? A- <sighs> Is she the like show doesn't know awkward girl boss like she is in the fr- like episodes three and four like yeah. what the fuck's going on? <laughs> so that was the other thing I was like, bah, I want to talk about that because they they haven't brought up the stupid fucking prophecy in a half minute. But the end Thank of the last the last episode actually that's what I think Girardi knows because remember she's telling him as she's killing him. Um, I wish I could tell you what I knew. I Which wish I don't know I... why she couldn't, because he was dying. He's, He's dying. dying. Like, you can say anything you want to him, bitch. We as the audience are not supposed to know yeah. what she knows. And then she says, I wish I didn't know. So I think that something about the prophecy is right. Mm. Or is is the is the factor on why the Commodore is doing what they're doing. Because... They, that's who had a conversation with Gerardi yeah. before she got on the ship was the Commodore and I think she probably told her something about the prophecy. The which, Commodore. The co- which nothing... Commodore O. Commodore O. The, nothing that the Commodore says to anybody as far as we know should be taken as correct or the truth. Nah. So but what, Girardi doesn't know what Gerardi knows might amount to just nothing but lies anyway. True. But Gerardi believes wholeheartedly whatever they told her. Yeah. So I just, I just mean like it would be very interesting if the show were to go that route where it'd be like, oh, I just murdered that man for what I thought was like a noble cause, but it actually turns out to be. And then she's going to like make some sort of sacrifice play to the data planet. Yeah. Um, that would be something, which is why this this show didn't do it (laughs) or is yet to do it. it, I'm throwing, I'm just throwing out my predictions left and right. Data planet and Girardi's going to sacrifice herself because she realizes that working with O was not it chief. It would be nice if if it was like, those are the kinds of things that the show needs to set up that it doesn't spend any time setting up. Like, yeah. If we if we knew information that, the, that she thought she knew, and it was like enough that we knew that part of it was right and part of it was wrong, so we weren't sure what was going on, that would be something like, "Ooh, here's something we can look forward to." But instead, we're just wondering, we're sitting here like, "What's this show about?" That's the only question that we've had this entire time. Like, yeah. what is the show about? Is it? So I, <clears throat> we had a theory about the Romulans and the Borg, which I don't. If it is true, it doesn't make sense why Data would be part of it. Because Data is not as old as the Borg. So that, like her being the destroyer of the Romulans doesn't make sense. If she's just, like, what what about her being Data makes that? I'm not sure how these things are going to connect. Um, like it could be unless it's all some like half assed attempt to tie and in, again into like first contact where I don't remember was it the board queen who was helping data become human yeah um and so like they have that connection there and so I feel if they try to use that as a tie between synthetics the Borg yeah and then like but they're um, synthetics to romulan and like have that be like a whole bridging thing like, but the hawak kalat that is trying to kill all synthetics they said is like two thousand years old yeah which would that timeline wouldn't work oh not at all um so i don't know what this show is about <laughs> <laughs> is it was what i'm back to yep because nothing makes... I don't have enough information, honestly, to kind of give a shit about what the story is at this point. Like, things are happening, and it's it's nice that things are finally happening at, at my face. Yeah. I don't know what it means. I don't know what I should be expecting or what I'm 
supposed to be taking away from any of this. So it's kind of just like a really empty, hollow experience. Yeah. Where I'm watching things happen around me. And I'm like, oh, I don't know what any of this means. The show does. The show does cutaways to characters doing things. And it's like, oh, that's important. Better remember that. And I'm like, I'm not going to because I don't know what it means. <laughs> you say, fuck it, Clooney's. Yeah, for those of you, for all of our Moist Boys fans, we stick in, we, we stuck with the uh, Clooney rating because it's kind of our thing, I guess. Like, it's it's our one. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. yeah. It's our kind of, from the beginning of us reviewing things, it was uh, started by a uh, Canadian guy, Feet Picks guy. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have their Cloonies ready? Because I do not. Five. Five. We gave you no time. <laughs> it was better. I mean, I've been giving it solid threes. Threes and fours. Threes and fours, yeah. Me, I have not given a four. I've been given threes. I've been given fours. Yeah. Yeah. No, will, uh, episode two f- got, like, negged down to a three after we talked <laughs> yeah. about it more. But I would give this one a five. Things actually started happening. There's a chance that the story is going to actually start moving forward. And there was a lot less gross. Yeah, it wasn't as gross as the last yeah, episode. Yeah, it was particularly gross. Um, I still have massive issues with the pacing. I still have massive issues with it not fucking understanding what it's gonna do with these characters. I'm I'm gonna lose my goddamn feminist mind on this episode. <laughs> these episodes here pretty soon because I'm just so fucking done with these women being only motivated by their children. Yeah. Their boyfriends. Hell yeah. Their old ass man lovers. Hell yeah. And their daddy issues. Woo yeah. Like that's fucking it. Like sometimes I'm, two of those things are the same thing. Sometimes two of those things at <laughs> the same fucking time. I would like just one of these female characters to have a motivation. Oh, you know what? Seven of nine was yeah. not man driven. It was female lady, partner lady yeah it was her driven. it was her partner revenge against an ex-partner driven i would just like to have one of them have a non-romantical yeah like yeah. drive like just one of them like that'd be fucking nice i have can not we go been... back to the warrior nun ladies i like them Let's yeah talk to them. i also have not been keeping track and i understand that it would probably be hard in a show that's supposed to be about picard but is not about Picard. No, but the women have not. There have been women having conversations. Has there been no passing of the Bechdel? Um, so Commodore O and Rizzo have a conversation, and they're vague in what they're talking about. But we find out what they're that talking conversation about doesn't count. Is Narek, and it doesn't count. And so that conversation doesn't count because it's fucking trash. <laughs> 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 it doesn't count because the vague thing they're talking about is narc. So yeah. it is still a conversation about a man. Um, the which like even I understand the like even admiral like, versus it, talking to Commodore O is about Picard. Yeah, like and, even the, the like things passing the Bechdel test is not like indicative of just like good. It's just like baseline. Yeah, and like, can you even pass it, this fucking? Can you pass you kindergarten? Have two. Two female characters on a fucking ship in outer fucking space together <laughs> with nothing else to fucking do. One of them literally goes and fucks a dude because she's got nothing else to do. And they have not had a conversation. Nope. Besides the it's random. It's because Raffi hates Gerardi. It's because Raffi hates Gerardi. Gerardi. But she doesn't give a fucking reason why. Because she's there. Because she's there. Because she's inexperienced and Picard brought her along on what Raffi was just grabbing a ride on. Yeah. Like. How dare you grab an extra person for this thing that I am just an extra person on. (laughs) Yeah. Fuck it. So there there it is. There's my goddamn rant about it. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We we did our rant. So you had some time. Um, I'm going to stick with a six. Uh, I think I've been more forgiving of this show all around. Um, part of that is, um, I know that I've said like a lot of my scores are on a sliding scale just based on what it is versus like, instead of like, here's my it's a hard and fast rule. Everything's got to be this. Like I'll give something an eight that something else that's also an eight isn't as like, I'm like, okay, it's not as good, but I'm still going to give it an eight. Yeah. But for this, I'm just like, I gave Star Wars, the Phantom Menace a six. So like, 
we'll just based around that. Um, and I think this is probably better than Fan. Like I'd probably watch this before Phantom Menace. I would not. <laughs> but by that you mean this episode? Yeah, this yeah, this one episode. This one episode instead of the Phantom Menace, I would. I would go Phantom Menace just because it wouldn't make me sad about the TNG music being used for fucking bullshit reasons, and I would get Duel of the Fates, which would be worth it. That's true. I like pod racing. (laughs) Space NASCAR. (laughs) It is. Space car. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I'm going to give this six Cloonies, which is like, for me, six is like... The very least that I will give a thing, like maybe, like that is the lower score of, of something that I'll be like, maybe I'll pay attention to that again. Yeah. Like, and it, like, a five, I'm like, I got through it. It wasn't super, it was, it was kind of painful. There's some bad stuff. I think I gave episode two a five, which is super generous because that's, <laughs> that's a four episode if I've ever seen one. It was so bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like this is the first episode that like barely passes the, you know what? I might watch that again someday. Yeah. How do you think we feel? We've been giving this nothing but threes and fours. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> uh, doing a podcast. Doing a podcast. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to our special crossover episode of His Dork Materials and the Moist Boys podcast. Oh, yeah. And also, uh, next time on Picard, uh, a bunch of bullshit's going to happen. And then the last 30 seconds. Hello, Will. I think it's going to happen pretty early Cut on. Cut to that's the only next episode time on Jonathan Picard. Frakes is in. So they're only in one episode, so they have to be early uh, on. Oh, is it? Okay, that's yeah. fair. But they're going to be bullshitting around that, that that house for a very long time. Yeah. Um, Please check out our Instagram and our Twitter. You can find us at uh, Instagram.com slash Moist Boys Podcast. We, or I put up a bunch of pictures of our new uh, sound dampening fields. We put up. They look pretty snazzy, um, stylish. Go ahead and comment who you think. Uh, just so the for those of you that are, are looking, uh, the three of us are the ones that selected the patterns. We each picked one. Comment with who you think uh, did each one. Maybe I'm gonna special prize a guy shitload of stickers, Moist Boys uh, logo stickers. The black does not count. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the black, that's just the default. There are three very uh, obvious ones uh, that uh, we each had a hand in choosing. If you can guess which one is which, uh, then uh, I'll shoot you a sticker somehow. Uh, slide into those DMs, uh, follow, and what tag a friend or whatever the hell you're supposed to do. On I'm, 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 not, I'm not up on... Sharing on Instagram is not streamlined very no well. you can't just share on instagram you have yeah. to have like the share app or you just screen cap you screen grab something and then post it on your thing or you just tag a, or you just have a bunch of comments where you're tagging different people that's super fun <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah if, if you go over to our twitter page uh at moist boys pod do the same thing i'm gonna i'll just say that the contest is running on both of those platforms yeah. if you get all three correct then uh, I'll pick somebody and you'll get a sticker. Uh, shoot us a DM. Give us a follow. Uh, if you can, give us a share. Uh, put us up on your Instagram story. Uh, we're also on go. Facebook, Moist Boys Podcast. So that's fun. Uh, we're also on Patreon, patreon.com slash Moist Boys Podcast. We're going to be putting stuff up on there soon. So please consider um, saving some pennies to throw our way. Pennies. Throw a coin to you, which I. Yeah. Um, we fuck. I fucked it up. It's toss a coin to your Witcher. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. go kill myself now. <laughs> uh, I want to do. I want to be. I want to start doing some Miyazaki films up on our Patreon. I want to do all of the Miyazaki. So you know what? If we get a Patreon going, you'll get some Miyazaki content, which is always good. Good content. Until next time, when we will begin Animarch, we're gonna be talking Weathering with You, Fireworks, A Silent Voice. And Millennium Actress, which I believe are all still, for the most part, up on streaming services, except for Weathering With You was just in theaters. Uh, By the time March comes around, who knows where it will be. It's floating in the ether. Yeah. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next time.